Hey everyone, I'm in the bathroom today on this continuing saga in the bathroom remodeling series here. This has been going on forever it seems like. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to prepare to install the wallboard. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the DIY Apprentice YouTube channel, I just want to welcome you here. And what we do on this channel is home improvement and automotive repair and maintenance. But we do it with a little bit of a twist. And what I mean by that is we actually approach these projects from the perspective of a relative novice. Because I actually have been a novice on some of these projects. And I've thought about some of the things that I really would like to know when I'm first starting out. And it's a little bit frustrating, honestly, at times to start working on these projects and not have some of the little nuances that really can trip you up when you try to work on something like a bathroom remodel or work on some sort of a car repair. So hopefully the information that I provide in these videos is helpful and it comes across in a manner that you can easily understand it and take the information and go forward and do your own work. All right, so there's a few things I need to do before I put the wall board in. I'm gonna point out one of those here and that is this tub. So I've already taken care of this, but the, one of the issues that I had was, as you saw, I think it was video number 55, I installed this cast iron tub. And I got it nice and level, and I thought I was finished, but something I did was I kind of just checked this out. I wanted to, to do a really quick check of it to make sure that it was nice and firm in here. And what I found was that when I stood up on this ledge here, and over here I just had both my feet kind of straddling the tub, and did one of these numbers where I was shifting my weight. What I found was that the tub was actually rocking just a tiny bit. So what the problem was is that I was using those junction box covers as my shims and I didn't have really any way to kind of fine tune that leveling. So this one foot over here was having issues with that and what I ended up doing instead of using the junction box cover as my last uh, layer of shimming, what I did was I used a piece of sheet metal, real simple. So that was my last layer that took care of that. No more rocking in the tub at all. And additionally, what I did once I got that all taken care of, I put some shims right over here, right here, and then also right over here. Just stuff those in nice and tight. And I used these composite shims here. I didn't want to use wood shims because I was worried about them rotting over time or being compressed by the tub. You know, the weight of the tub, it's a 310 pound cast iron tub, so I used these composite shims. And then once I got those stuffed in there nice and tight, I used this Japanese pull saw here to cut them flush with the edge of the tub. So that took care of that. The tub is in nice and level, and it's in nice and firm. I feel really good about it now. I didn't want to question myself about whether this tub was installed correctly, and I feel good about that now, and I can just go ahead and move forward with what I want to do in the rest of the bathroom here. All right, so after I've got the tub in, I feel really good about that. The next thing I'm going to do is start putting some blocking in the walls, and that's to support the wallboard, but also to support any accessories that I'm going to put on the walls here. So the first thing is the rope hooks. Those are going to go kind of in this area here, and the door is right here. This is where the door is going to swing in this way. So if I measure from here to there, the door is going to end up somewhere around here. Now, I thought about it, I said, okay, I don't really want to put the rope hooks behind the door as it swings in, but at the same time, I don't want the rope hooks so close to the floor heat thermostat and also the towel bar that everything seems kind of crowded. So I'm just going to put the, t the rope hooks up where I think they should go, regardless of how the door swings in, because this is a pretty small bathroom, so I'm not going to worry about it. So the measurements that I've seen for rope hooks is about 70 inches from the floor. And the floor is not covered right now, so if I measure from here to up here and add about an inch, that puts us about right there. So I actually have already marked that off on the wall. It's about 70 inches from the finished floor. And so what I'm going to do is put a block right in there to support the row hooks. All right, so what I'm going to do first off here is measure the spacing of this cavity. And we've got about 14 and a quarter. So my blocking is going to be cut at 14 and a quarter. And what I'm going to use is a typical interior fur lumber. This is a two by four. You can probably get away with using a one by four piece of material when you're putting an accessory blocking, but for anything in the shower surround, I probably would stick with two by fours. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and then I'll come back and install it. 
All right, so I've cut my blocking and it's ready to go in. And I cut the blocking typically a little bit wider than the cavity, just a hair wider so that I can just flex the stud apart and then slide it in. I don't want to have it too loose and then try to balance it while I'm putting in the screw. So go ahead and put this in. Now I've checked to make sure that all the wall studs are in about the same plane. They're not exactly the same plane, but I can shim things out where I need to. So I want to make sure this blocking is flush with the stud or a little bit back. Go ahead and sink this in. There's one. I'm going to move to this side and do one of the screws over here. Alright, so I've got the blocking in now for the rope hooks, and I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the towel bars. This, you've already seen me do blocking a million times in these videos, so um, I'll show you exactly where I'm going to put it and talk a little bit about the measurements too. Okay, so I tried to get everything on this wall in focus as much as possible. So we've got our blocking right there for the rope hooks. We've got our housing for the thermostat. That's the floor heat thermostat. And then the towel bar is going to go somewhere down in this area. So... I went upstairs to check the bathroom upstairs since I'm used to using that bathroom. They're the same dimensions. And the uh, towel bar upstairs is about 16 inches from the tub. So if I measure from about right here, this is the edge of the tub, over this way, as you can see it there, puts us about right here. That's where the towel bar would start. So my thought is just to go ahead and hang the towel bar right off of this stud here. And then the end of the towel bar would be over here somewhere. It's about 24 inches long. So that puts us in this cavity right there. So my thought is to put a piece of blocking right over here and then put one over here also, just in case I decide that I want to shift it left or right. So that's an option there. Now let's talk about the height of the towel bar off the floor. It's about 42 to 48 inches typically. The towel bar upstairs is at 48 inches off the floor, so that's probably where I'm going to put it here. So I'm going to measure up. So there is 48, and I'll add an inch for the finished flooring. And that puts us at 49 right there. Okay, so I've got the blocking in for the robe hooks and the towel bar. So I've got two blocks here, and then I've got one block up here. Now, I'm going to also need some blocking on the wall over there potentially right in this area possibly because I think we're gonna put a towel rack over here but as you can see there's a lot of pipes going through here and some cabling too so we're gonna to have to figure out exactly what we want to do here we might end up I'll swing it around one more time hope you don't get dizzy here but we may end up putting a towel ring on this wall here this is where the light switches are so I haven't decided on that yet. I need to find one first of all because the uh, line of products that I bought, the line of accessories that I bought to put in the bathroom are discontinued. So it's been kind of hard to find anything to match those. So uh, what we're going to do now in the meantime though, I'll swing it around one more time, is we're actually going to start working on the blocking around the tub there. Okay, so I did a little bit of experimenting here. So what I wanted to do was make sure the blocking that I put in for the tub surround is even and flush with the edge of the studs. So what I did here is put a 2x2 two two up, screwed that in all the way across the wall here, and that seems to have worked out pretty well. Now I did have to make sure I had this nice and centered so that the block, so it wasn't too high on the block there. Got it about right there. Of course, I also had to make sure I had enough space to get the screws in down here and that they're nice and countersunk, which they are. So I've got two screws going in the top, three inch screws, and then two down here in the bottom. So my first block is in, and I'm going to move on to next, putting in my second block right over here. All right, so I've got my next block of wood cut here, and it's ready to go in. 
The one thing I need to be cognizant of is I'm going to be putting a screw in through this way. So I need to make sure it doesn't cross right here. So that's one thing to think about. And then the other thing is I need to make sure this blocking is high enough so I don't split the wood here if I decide to leave this in place while I'm doing this. So what I may end up doing is taking this out after I get the top two screws in, but I really would like to keep this in place to help it uh, stay nice and flush with the edge of the studs here. So we'll see how this goes, but basically what I did here, this line represents the lip of the tub. So the lip of the tub will kind of hit about right there which should give me enough material to screw uh, toe screw right through the face here and into the studs. What I'm going to do is go ahead and put this in first of all about right there and I'll grab my clamps clamp that down grab my other one here Looks good. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I drilled the hole already, and I'm going to go ahead and put my screw in. It should not cross with this screw on this side. I've got it a little bit higher. Alright, so we're done with this wall. Very simple, very easy to do. So I'm going to move to the back wall next. So we've got our holes drilled in the front, holes drilled in the top there. So I can go ahead and put this in now. Okay, so I'm ready to put the corner piece in over here, but uh, before I tackle that, the one thing I wanted to deal with is this area here. And as you can see, trying to put a piece of block in this area because of this pipe is a little bit of an issue, a little bit of a challenge there. So, you know, I've run into these kinds of issues throughout this project, as you've seen, and it can be a little bit frustrating, honestly, at times. But in my mind, I always try to think, how can I fix this? Because dwelling on this issue is not going to solve the problem. I just need to get to work and try to figure out how to fix it. So what I've noticed is that this pipe is about an inch and a quarter back in the cavity. So what I'm going to do is actually just make a little dado cut in the block. Uh, probably about a half inch deep. So I have a little bit of space between the block and this pipe. And that should work out just fine. And then when I go to put the backer board up, I'm going to avoid this area, but if I actually screw into this area, I should be fine. I shouldn't actually hit the pipe by screwing into the blocking in this area. But again, I'm just going to mark it off just to make sure. So I guess what's the preventative measure here? What I could have done is actually run the pipe through the wall. Uh, I wasn't really all that confident in my soldering skills, but I could have also soldered a lot of this pipe outside the wall and on the bench in the garage. That would have been a remedy for this. But uh, like I said, I'm just going to tackle it the way it is now and get it done. Alright, so what I've done here is marked off, this is where the pipe's going to basically sit in this area. And so I've made this a little bit wider than the pipe size. It's probably about a quarter of an inch wider on each side. And then, on this side, this is my depth here. You can barely see that mark probably. But that's about a half inch deep. So what I've done here is raise my table saw blade up to that height. So we'll go ahead and cut that. Now I do actually have a dado set, but I didn't want to pull that out just for one block because it's a little bit of time to set that up. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this particular blade here, which is a single blade. Go ahead and make my cut here. Let me plug this in. It's going to get a little bit loud because I'm also going to turn on my vacuum cleaner here too since I got the garage door closed.
All right, so there we go. Dado's all cut there. It doesn't have to be nice and flush or anything because, you know, nobody's going to see this anyway. All right, so now I'm on to the last cavity, and there's a little bit of an issue to deal with here because typically what you'll see is a stud in that area that goes from the floor all the way to the ceiling, and that supports the edge of the backer board. But I'll point you up and kind of show you is... If you remember, several videos ago, probably I want to say about 15 videos ago, I put in a wall hung toilet in the bathroom upstairs so I could raise the ceiling height in here about seven inches. And by doing that, this pipe used to be over here, and it's now over here. So the stud that was here before, of course, no longer can exist there. So what I'm going to have to do, what I've decided to do is, I should say, is I've decided to use Den Shield as my backer board material because basically that's a drywall. And I got four by eight sheets of Den Shield so I can span from the corner all the way over to this stud right here instead of putting the stud right here. So, what that means basically is what I'm going to have to do is skim coat the face of the Den Shield. And that's something that actually is allowed, it's actually recommended by one of their tech support people. You can actually skim the face of the Den Shield. If you have a situation like that so that's what I'm going to do here um, that's one reason why I'm not using cement board or a fiber cement or some other material because of that issue so I still am going to put a block down here and what's going to happen I'm going to have a block probably go like this and then I'll have another block kind of like a cross brace there so I'll show you that in a bit here all right so I'm going to go ahead and attach these together as an assembly we're going to see how this works out I may end up having to detach them because of the spacing in the wall but we're going to give it a try here so I've got a mark here. That's where I'm going to place this block. I'm going to place it just slightly to the left of that mark. And what I'm going to do, I've got my table saw here to act as kind of a flat surface. And I've got my uh, fence right there. All right, so I'm going to start drilling just a couple little holes here so I have a pilot to start with. And same thing on the other side. So that's basically it there. Hopefully I can fit this in the wall now. So we'll go ahead and try it in the wall. All right, let's uh, test this out, see if this fits. I've got all my holes drilled out on my blocks there, so I think we're ready to go. I've also got a clamp on the wall here, and that is because I wanted to spread these studs out as much as possible so I can get this in. So let's see how this goes. There we go. Drop this down, and there we go. And I'll put the second one in now. And this one, like I said, I've angled it just a little bit. It's kind of going in, kind of like this. All right, perfect. So I'm really happy with that. That looks pretty good. So uh, let me go ahead and pull the clamps off. And we'll take a look at the whole wall. I'll set up and see how we did. Okay, so let's take a look around the room here. And basically the tub surround is all I want to check. So it looks like the blocking is pretty well flush just about everywhere. I'm very happy with the way that turned out. So we'll take a look around the room here. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to talk real quick through a couple things that I've done in here to fight, kind of finish up these walls. So the first thing is I put up a nailer right there. And that's so I can have the backer board run from the corner to that nailer and then start my drywall on that stud right there and run it all the way to the right. 
So that's going to make it a lot easier to attach the drywall and the backer board. I don't have to worry about any seams falling on the middle of a stud. And you can see that runs from the ceiling and then it stops right there. And then I jump over the pipe and start it again all the way to the floor. And so I'll show you that real quick. Got a nail plate there protecting that pipe. Comes all the way down. Right down there. And then I also, of course, jumped over the, the shutoff for the toilet, too. So that looks good. So right there, that strap, I moved it to the right after I shaved the had to shave the heads of the nails off using an oscillating tool because I had nothing else I could use to get those nails out. So that took quite a bit of time. I have a sacrificial blade for my oscillating tool that I use for stuff like that. So shave the heads of the nails off, pull the strap out, and then I cut the strap a little bit shorter and put it back up. And the strap, you can see, is shifted a little bit to the right so that I have some space up there to attach the drywall right over there. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.